Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic uh, PDE solver for the heat equation in Comsol. So this is the this is an older version of Comsol. This is version 4.3. Uh, so the first thing you do is you go to File New. I select the 2D, and then you uh, select the right arrow here. And you can go down to Mathematics, uh, PD Interfaces, and let's use this coefficient form PD, and double click that, and that adds it in with the dependent variable being U, uh, one uh, dependent variable, and then you click the right arrow again. Let's select the time dependent study. Uh, and that's it, and then you select the, uh, the finish flag. Okay, so now you're going to uh, add in the geometry. So for the geometry, let's uh, make a square or a rectangle. So let's draw this rectangle. You can just draw a random rectangle, and then you can go and select it afterwards and adjust the dimensions. So let's put the position at 0, 0 a width of 2 and a height of 1. OK, and then uh, just press Build Selected. OK, so there's our uh, geometry. OK, so now you can go down to uh, the coefficient form of the PDE. Uh, this is using the domain 1 here. And you can see the general PDE form here and let's, uh, this is just set up to do a regular heat equation. So you can see uh, isotropic. You can see that it's basically just uh, du dt times dA, which is 1, minus uh, 1 times uxx. And just for simplicity, let's set everything else to be 0. I think it, you can put in a, these don't, it doesn't have to be constant coefficients. And in uh, some of the cases you want, might want to do, uh, this might be a function of the domain, but uh, you might have to explore how that's done. So now you would go and add the necessary boundary conditions. So uh, you can see that it's currently set up to be zero flux conditions on all four boundaries, but we're going to overwrite that in a second. And then the initial value is just set to 0 and 0 for the uh, solution and its uh, time derivative. So you right click this coefficient and then you add in, uh, let's add a Dirichlet boundary condition on the bottom boundary. You can select the bottom boundary and add it in. So this is the bottom boundary 2. And then let's just prescribe the Dirichlet condition to be uh, so uh, uh, just 1. And you can always select this equation and see what uh, that has to correspond to. Uh, OK, right click it again. Let's add in periodicity conditions on the first and second side boundaries. So Shift Select. And then you can add that in here. And then again, let's right click and add a flux condition. So this would impose. Uh, like DUD, DUDY on the top boundary is equal to G. So let's set that to be just a constant input of 1 on the top boundary. So like top boundary and add that in. OK, now if I go back to the zero flux condition, you can see that uh, one boundaries 2 and 3 have been overwritten. 1 and 4 correspond to the periodic boundary conditions, and I'm not entirely sure um, why this condition doesn't seem to overwrite 1 and 4, but let's just leave that. I think you can probably remove this, or you might be able to remove 1 and 4 here. Does that work? I can't remove it here. Um, 
zero flux. I would think that the zero flux condition is not going to do, it's not going to touch the periodic boundary condition. So you can, I guess you can go and double check in the solution. Is it the case that uh, this is adding an extra du dx equal to zero uh, condition on the first and the fourth boundaries? But I would hope that this, this periodic boundary condition doesn't overwrite the zero flux condition. And this is, it's not doing anything here. OK, so I've set the four boundary conditions. I have my initial condition. Um, I can also go to geometry here, and I'm just going to add in a point. Right click, add in a point. And let's just add a point in at the value 1 and 0. And build selected, uh, let's add uh, 1 and 0 0.5 instead. Because I would like to measure the temperature at that point and plot it in a, in a minute. So I'm just adding that extra point in. OK, so now if I, before I press the study, uh, I'm going to add in some plots. Or rather, let's just do the study first, and we'll see what extra plots we can get from the results. So I, you can, if you click your mesh here, um, you can just press this build all button and that should just uh, produce the finite element mesh. And then if you go to study here, uh, you can see that you can specify a range of times. So let's go from, let's say, one to two uh, seconds or uh, units. And then uh, Okay, it's got a bunch of options which we're not going to use. And then now I think if I just press compute here at the top, I go to study one and then press compute here, it'll do the computation and there we are. Now this plot looks like the temperature U uh, along the horizontal domain and the vertical domain uh, at time t is equal to two. It would be nice to be able to plot a video of this, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that. So instead, I'm just going to add a 1D plot. So I'd like to see what the evolution looks like. So I'm going to add a 1D plot. Um, I got that by right-clicking results. And then if I right-click 1D plot again, I can add a point graph. And in this point graph, I can select the uh, uh, my domain disappeared for a second there. How do I get that back? Hmm. Okay, so, oh, okay, I just click. So click the point graph one here, click the selection menu, and then um, if I click this point here, or right, let's do all points. Let's do all points. So we're going to plot the evolution of the temperature over all five of these points, including the central point, which was the extra point we put in. You're going to plot u on the y-axis, and on the horizontal axis, you'll plot the time. And then if I now press the plot, there we are. So uh, there's no legend. I'm guessing that. Um, I'm guessing that the values at some of the points might be lying on top of each other. So that's why you only see a few curves here. Let's remove all these points. Let's just plot the central point. So if I go to manual, I just want this point here. And then let me just remove all these other points. Add the central point here. And then press the plot button again. And there we are. So I suppose our solution was starting from 0 at uh, u is equal to 0 at time t is equal to 0. And then the source condition at the very top is causing the temperature to increase uh, to increase as time increases. OK? Um, and I think so for, you know, for your, for your, when you're doing this kind of simulation and you'd like to plot output, it may be easier to work with t 
tables to ask uh, COMSOL to export tables uh, for example, tables of u of x and y in time, and then to plot them using MATLAB or some uh, other programming language that uh, where you can more easily manipulate the quantities. All right, that's it.